Hello everyone, my name is Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So in today's episode about the Husqvarna Norden 901, what I'm gonna do is take you for a tour of the bike. So I'm gonna show you all the features. I'm gonna mention some of the specifications. I'm gonna show you how it's equipped exactly from the factory. So I'm filming this just the day after I picked the bike up so there's no modifications because I wanna show you exactly what to expect uh, if you buy your bike from a Husqvarna dealer without any modifications. Now, a couple things. Keep in mind that in different countries, there might be slight differences in equipment. So you might see some differences there and I'll try to point those out if I know about those things. Now this is gonna be what I call like a surface tour or features and specs and equipment tour. So I'm doing another video in a few days, so subscribe for it and stay tuned. I'm doing another video where I tear like the fairings off. I'll, I'll show you the skid plate. I'll take these side protectors off and show you how they're constructed. We'll go under the seat, we'll look at the battery, we'll look at the air filter access, the oil change, talk about some of the maintenance, and just kind of go a little bit deeper into the bike, which is something that most uh, other motorcycle journalists um, don't do. So. Look forward to that. That's going to be a really fun, interesting video. Uh, but without any more introduction, let's just go ahead and get started with the tour. So we'll start here on the right-hand side of the Norden, and then we'll work our way around. We'll start here on the right front of the motorcycle, and we'll just, if we see something, we'll talk about it. So you've got these white uh, fork leg protectors here. Uh, notice the spoked wheels. They are tubeless wheels on the Norden, which is really, really nice to have. 21 inch front wheel and the rear wheel is an 18 inch. You've got these uh, four piston uh, radially mounted uh, calipers. I think they're made by Brake Tech or one of KTM or Husky's in-house brands. They're not a Brembo brake, but they're very powerful. You've got these large floating uh, twin front discs, and I'll put the size of those discs here because I don't remember it off the top of my head. So for tires, Husky gives you the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs, which are a pretty nice uh, tire for 50-50 riding. So 50% off-road, 50% on-road. Uh, so far, they're working really well on the highway, but I haven't tested them in the dirt just yet. You'll also notice the low front fender. So they chose to use a low front fender, I believe, one for styling and two because it creates less wind drag and less wind buffeting on your handlebars and on, on your body uh, when you're on the highway. So it doesn't catch the wind as bad and it kind of matches the styling of the bike. Some people will want to fit a higher fender and we'll have a video about that later. So let's move around here to this fairing here. So this is the gas tank, this hard plastic piece you see here. Okay, and it's very similar to the fuel tank on the KTM 890. But the difference is up here on the Husky, you've got this fairing piece, this plastic piece that I'm tracing here, and we're gonna tear this off in a few days. Uh, and behind here is just the gas tank, but the gas tank is narrow at the top. You probably also have some wires and things like that. Um, so you've got, this is a very different styling aspect, obviously, of this bike and makes it pretty unique. You can see the cooling fan here, which will move the hot air through the radiator. Here, these are essentially the protector plates for the gas tank. So on the KTMs, you've noticed that they use like a hard rubberized plastic here, but Husky chose to use this kind of uh, somewhat kind of aluminum material. I believe this is gonna show scratches worse than like the KTM, uh, but I guess we'll find out. It, it's also a removable piece right here. This piece bolts off one, two, three, four screws, and you can take that off and replace it if it gets damaged. Grab a little bit of coffee here to keep us going. So, what do you notice coming around this side? We'll talk about the controls in a minute in the handlebars. You notice the seat. So it's got this yellow accent line that runs through the bike. Now, one small issue with this is that if when you raise the seat to the high position, and I'll show you this in another video, the yellow does not line up. So that's kind of a weird thing that I didn't think about uh, before, I, before I actually took the bike home. Let's look here, you've got the frame, uh, the swing arm. Uh, the engine is just uh, kind of this cool like bronze or metallic color, which I think is different than the KTM. You've got an oil sight glass here. Uh, the skid plate under here is actually pretty good for a stock factory skid plate. It's, um, it's, it's somewhat thin. I mean, if you're, if you're a very aggressive off-road rider, you're gonna wanna replace that. But for a factory skid plate, for an adventure bike, it's one of the best out there. You've got a uh, brake pedal here, which you can adjust with a uh, little screw or locking nut right here to adjust the travel. Uh, you've also got these foot pegs, which are relatively good size, and the rubber actually pulls off of these, or actually you have to unscrew something at the bottom. This rubber insert will pull out, which I'm actually gonna do when I'm done shooting this video. I just wanted to show you how the bike comes stock. You can pull the rubber out for riding off-road. 
You've got the rear hydraulic brake reservoir here. So it's a clear container so you can see when your brake fluid is getting dirty or, or burnt up. Moving around here, these side panels are removable. They pull off and I'll show that in, one of, in that video where I talk about deconstructing the bike. But there's actually uh, tool kits and little tool pouches underneath here. So you can store things in these side panels which is really, really handy. Moving around, this is a detachable with bolts, uh, rear fat passenger foot pegs with a rubberized coating. So that's, I really like how you can unbolt them from the bike, that's very nice. The exhaust is routed high and out of harm's way and won't be damaged in a crash, unlike some bikes we won't mention right now. You've got a little heat shield here. Uh, let's see, the swing arm, you can see they kind of have this cutout design in a swing arm, I believe, to save weight. Flipping around here to the other side, you've got an exhaust heat shield here, which is actually, that's a metal heat shield right here to protect the leg of your passenger. You can see this texture on the seat here. It's almost like a perforated pattern on the sides. And then the, on the driver's seat, you've got this kind of Alcantara material, whereas the passenger seat just uses the vinyl material. You've got the stock factory exhaust, which is actually very lightweight for a factory motorcycle exhaust, very well made. It's also very quiet, which some people will like and some people will not like. Moving around to the rear axle attachment here, you've got the chain adjustment, the axle ABS sensor on the rear wheel, a large disc brake at the back with two pistons, and I mentioned the tubeless 18 inch rear wheel with the Pirelli Scorpion Rally tire. Looking at the Norden from the rear, uh, you've got the license plate hanger with reflectors and the integrated uh, LED brake and taillight, which are actually pretty bright, and I'll put a little video of that here. Uh, in the U.S., unfortunately, we get these crappy incandescent turn signals, which I am replacing with LED turn signals as soon as I get the chance. And I'll have some video or some mention of that, and I'll give you a link to that. Uh, the rear section, the, the whole mechanism here, is nice and compact. They didn't extend it way down like some bikes, so I don't see any reason to need to modify this or get a tail tidy. Uh, because they've, they've already made it pretty compact. So good job there. You can see the large exhaust outlet here and you can see the back of the rear rack. That's about it for the back. So let's turn around to the other side. Working our way around the left hand side of the motorcycle, starting from the back, uh, you can see the luggage rack, the passenger grab handles, which are pretty ergonomic. You've got the other side panel, which I mentioned these pull off and you got the tools underneath. Passenger foot peg here, the chain guard, which is nice and sturdy, the chain final drive, We've already talked about the wheels and tires. There's a small mud guard in here to help prevent some of the mud from coming up uh, to the shock. So I like how they protected the rear shock kind of from mud. That's a good design. It's also got another kind of protector here on the top of the shock. You've got the catalytic converter inside here. Uh, my bike has a battery tender pigtail. I don't know if my dealer put that on or if that's something that Husqvarna is doing from the factory. The preload adjuster for the rear shock to accommodate passengers or luggage, the extra weight is right here, and that's nice and easy to spin by hand. Uh, then you've got, I mentioned the foot pegs already. I'll probably be replacing them with a larger foot peg. You've got the gear shift linkage, which is this uh, turnbuckle style adjustment, which is really easy to adjust, so I appreciate that. This wire you see here is actually not stock. I rode the other night, it was very cold. I live in the mountains, so I use a heated jacket liner, so that's the wire for that, so that does not come with the bike. Uh, also, this sticker obviously does not come with the bike, I just like the way it looked. Also, you can see the kind of topographic pattern here on the tank. These are not a, these are like somehow molded into the plastic or under some kind of coating because I cannot like get my fingernail under here to scratch this to like lift up. So this is not a decal that's gonna peel off. So I appreciate that. The same with this whole fairing. Uh, they did a good job on that because some bikes, I remember when the 790s came out, the decals would like peel off. So you don't have that worry here. You can see you've got another exhaust fan for the radiator on this side. It's a very large curved radiator. The other uh, skid plate here for the gas tank, skid plate down here. The kickstand is uh, it's a nice smooth action and it has it's the perfect angle. It doesn't lean the bike over too much, but it leans it over enough. It has a pretty small foot. I wish manufacturers would start putting larger kickstand foot so that bikes wouldn't sink into sand and mud, but that's something you can always do in the aftermarket. Down here, there's actually a uh, petcock. There's a petcock on each side of the tank. They should be open from the factory. 
Um, if your bike has an issue running, that's one of the first things I would do is make sure that these pet cocks are open because that allows fuel to flow through the bottom of the tank to the fuel pump. Working our way around to the front on the left-hand side, it's the same as the other side, so there's really not much to go over there. I don't think I mentioned the suspension yet. So the suspension on the bike is, the front fork is a WP Apex fork, and it looks very familiar from other motorcycles, the, K, the standard KTM 890 Adventure, not the R. Also, I think the previous Triumph Tiger, I'm pretty sure that this is the very similar suspension that that bike had. It has 8.6 inches of travel or 220 millimeters of travel, uh, which is a nice amount. It's between the uh, standard 890 Adventure and the 890R, so they split the difference there. What I also like on the suspension is if you can see, they give you these O-rings already on the fork. That, that's useful because you can see your sag, how much the sag is. Uh, when you sit on the bike, you can also see how much of the travel you're using so you can make some of your adjustments. So really appreciate that. You've got the stainless steel brake lines, which is a nice thing to see. You don't have cheap rubber brake lines. You've got a, what looks like the speedometer sensor wire coming down here. And I think that's about it for this side. Let's take a look at the front of the Norden. The front end styling of the Norden is very unique. I'm also finding it somewhat controversial. Some of you love it, some of you hate it. Styling is just a matter of opinion. Personally, I like it. I think it looks very distinctive and different from everything else on the road. Also, it's got this cool yellow, little yellow stripe uh, kind of under the headlight here, which is a really nice tie into the rest of the yellow on the bike. You've got this large round LED headlight, high and low beam, the lights are very bright and some of the best factory lights on any motorcycle that I've tested recently. Okay, here's the stock bow beam. Now I'm going to turn on the driving lights. There's the driving lights. We turn them off again. You see how it spreads out light to the sides? Okay, now I'll show you the high beam. There's the high beam there. High beam, low beam, high beam. Turn off the driving lights. You see how those driving lights add a lot of fill light? Also, you've got the built-in LED fog lights or driving lights. What I find is it leaves spread a lot of light to the sides of the road, and I'll put a little video of that here because I took a video last night when I rode it back. You've got uh, holes going through here, uh, ostensibly for probably air going through to uh, not build up too much air pressure. So you've got holes here that vent to the back of the fairing up towards the rider. You can see the WP Apex fork, the triple clamp here, the brake line is routed under here. I'm interested to see how you would mount a high front fender. I'm kind of curious to take a harder look at that to see how we would be able to do that. And you can see the windshield uses four attachment screws here and it's very sturdy. So unlike the windshield on the uh, 790s and 890s that use like one bolt for the whole windshield and it kind of flaps around, this bike doesn't do that. The, the reason that's good is that when you put on a larger windshield or a wider windshield, it's going to catch more wind, but it's a very sturdy attachment from the factory. So unlike the KTM 890, when you put on a large windscreen, it goes like this. This bike won't do that because it's a nice, a sturdy four point attachment here. Now, I wish that we had the tinted windshield like the uh, rest of the world gets, but in the US we get this ugly clear windshield, which for vehicle code regulations, uh, they have to put that on. Uh, one complaint I do have about this, and it was the same with the 790s and 890s, is that there's this big hole right here that exposes the exhaust header and uh, some the horn and some equipment here, and it just allows dirt, mud, and rocks, gravel, to get kicked up by the front tire and accumulate down inside the skid plate here and get the front of the engine dirty. Now they sell an accessory plate that bolts on there, but why not just make that factory? That's really dumb and is really cheaping out by uh, Husqvarna and KTM on that. They should just include that because it looks very unfinished without it. So I mentioned we're gonna do a breakdown of the bike. We're gonna take things apart and show you underneath. But I did wanna show you one thing uh, before we move on, which is the seat height adjustment. So to remove the seat, there you take the key out of the ignition, there's a hole over here, and the passenger seat pops off first. It's a very nice, it pops off very easily, it fits very well. And underneath the seat is a nice place to store papers and things like that. Then the driver's seat simply comes off um, there's some kind of, it has like little uh, notches down here and that comes off like this, okay? So you can see the seat is very lightweight. 
And under here, this is gonna be the, the air box. The battery on the bike is right here under this, and this they give you this little cover. So very convenient to access your battery. I really like that. Now, this height adjustment on the seat, here's how this works. So it has two positions, high and low. I believe low is 33.5 and I believe high is 34.5. That's in inches, I'll put the millimeters here. So to put the seat in the high position, you position it, you put it down to the notches, and then you kind of move the seat up into position here. And then the rear of the seat sits up on little rubber bumpers in here that you can't see. So now you see that it's in the high position because you see the yellow does not line up anymore, which is visually very annoying for somebody like me who's OCD. And then you can go ahead and put the passenger seat, you simply put it in like this, and it pops into place. So now the seat's in the high position and you can see the difference. Okay, so I wanna show you uh, kind of the riding position and the ergonomics a little bit and show you my reach to the ground. So I am five foot 11 inches and I have a 32 inch inseam. So here's, <laughs> it's tall. Just be prepare you, it's tall. Here's something about the Husky that's interesting. The seat is very, very wide, especially at the back. So what happens is that the bike is higher, it sits higher than the seat height would suggest. So you see, oh, 33 and a half in seat height, that's not bad. But because the seat is so wide and supportive and, and comfortable, by the way, that's the trade-off, it, it's a very big reach to the ground. So I have to scooch my butt off one side of the seat to be able to flat foot on either side, and I'm five foot 11. If I try to sit at the back of the seat, I can't, I can really, I'm only on my tiptoes and that's very awkward. But if you scooch to the front of the seat, it's narrower and it's easier to reach the ground. So here's the seat in the low position or what some people might call the standard position. You can see the yellow lines up again. And in this position, the bike feels pretty comfortable for someone of my height. I think if you're shorter, um, if you're a shorter rider, this may not be the best bike for you. It's quite tall. Uh, they do offer a lower suspension kit uh, from Husqvarna as an accessory. You might want to look into that, but you're starting off pretty tall and the seat is wide. You could change the seat, you could change the suspension, you could do all that if you really like the bike, but it's not going to be a great bike for somebody who's vertically challenged. Uh, but see, you see here the riding position in the low, uh, the low seat. It, it feels good initially. I just felt like on the long ride my leg was a little bit um, too cramped, but it's much easier for me to, I still have some bend in my knee when I'm flat footing here on the ground. All right, let's take a look at the cockpit of the Norden 901. So it's a lot different than the KTM if you're coming off that bike. You have this large plastic fairing up here. Starting at the top, you have a place for your GPS. This cover pops off and there's wiring under here for your GPS uh, that's switched with the key, which is great. Great place to mount your GPS and I will be mounting a GPS here using the Moto Pumps mount. You've got a 12 volt power outlet here on the right and then on the left side, you have the switch for the uh, driving lights or the auxiliary lights, which feels very flimsy to me if I'm being honest. You've got the key location here. Uh, I wanted to mention the hand guards. The hand guards on the bike are actually pretty decent for a plastic hand guard. They're pretty strong and they're gonna be able to withstand a decent amount of, of impact or drops. I think if you're you know, gonna be off-roading a lot and you plan to drop your bike a lot, then you're gonna wanna invest in a hand guard with a metal backbone. But they're very good for factory equipment. I'm pretty actually impressed they're not totally flimsy like most adventure motorcycles come with. The mirrors, I hate the mirrors. They're cheap. They look like, you know, something from like the auto parts discount rack bin at Pep Boys. I don't like them. They also vibrate. So they're going to be going away as soon as I'm done filming this video. I actually already bought double take mirrors for the bike. So those are going away. The switch gear uh, does feel a little bit cheap uh, to, compared to some bikes, but it, it works very well. And the thing I like about the switch gear is it's backlit. So at night, these buttons are lit up and that's a very, very useful thing to have. Uh, on the right-hand side, you've just got the kill switch and engine start switch here. On the left-hand side, you've got the four-way controller, which is very easy to use. You've got the turn signals and the horn. You've got the cruise control, which is very easy to use. You simply uh, uh, tap it to the left to activate it, and then you can set up and down your speed there. And the high beam is on the front of the switch gear 
there. Also, the control levers are fully adjustable uh, for reach, both of the control levers, so I really like to see that. Also, the handlebar, one great thing that KTM and Husky is doing, uh, what they've done for a long time, is adjustable handlebar position. They've got three different holes in the top of the triple clamp. You can move the handlebar front and back like this. Uh, you cannot raise the handlebar. Uh, you'd have to do that with risers, but it, it does allow to accommodate for different um, people with different heights and different arm lengths. That's a very, very useful thing to have. Also up here, you've got the adjustments for the left-hand fork, you adjust your compression, and the right-hand fork, you adjust your rebound. The reason I like that is because no more crawling on the ground underneath the front fork to adjust it. All the adjustments are done at the top. Now, unfortunately, there's no preload adjustment, so that is kind of a bummer. And also, I wanted to mention that the rear shock, one big bummer I have is that there's no compression adjustment on the rear shock. There's a rebound adjustment and there's a preload, but no compression. Okay, congratulations for making it this far. Now I've been debating whether to do the dashboard in this video or not. I'm gonna actually do that in a separate episode because this video would get too long and that would get lost in all the other information. So if you're interested in seeing how all the electronic controls and the dashboard function on the Norden, then stay tuned. That will be one of the next videos in this series coming out in just the next you know, a few days or a week at most. And all my Norden 901 videos are in a playlist on my channel if you want to see them all in one place. So I'm trying to make them easy to find. So I hope this was useful, I hope this was informative. If there are questions about anything you saw in this video or questions on the bike in general, uh, put those down below. I have been compiling all of your questions over these past several weeks through this process and I am doing a video in the next week or so answering all the questions you have about this bike because I know there's a lot of you wondering if you should buy one or not. And I'm trying to do the best I can to give you all the information possible. So put those questions down below. I'll add them to my list if there's something new. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next videos in the series. Thank you, thank you so much for your support. Please support the channel, which there's ways in the description below to do that. Other than that, please ride safe and we'll see you out there. So 65 miles an hour, you can hear the wind. It's windy and it's noisy. So, you know, like I said, I'm gonna be looking to do something about that. The brakes, man, the brakes are so good on this.